The Orkadia Kasperova is recognized today as being Russia's most important woman composer of the first half of the 20th century. But when I went to Russia in 2014 to search for this enigmatic and, and lost name, Leokadja Kasperova, I discovered only one reference to her in print. It was a footnote to a biography of her uncle, Vladimir Kasperov, an operatic composer of the 19th century. And at the end, it just lists other relatives, Leo Kajia Kasperova, piano teacher and pianist. Not even a reference to her being a composer. So it was very, very exciting. The first morning um, in April 2014, when I went to the St. Petersburg Conservatoire to have a meeting with the director, Elena Nekrasova, to obtain her blessing, really, her authorization to study. And I couldn't resist the temptation to go into the library and ask immediately of the librarians, what do you have of Leo Kajia Kasperova, and of course they just drew a blank. They'd never heard of the name, they say, we don't know the name, we don't think we have anything at all, please can you look? And of course they came back with the symphony, uh, her greatest work. From the period she qualified as a concert pianist and composer in 1895, she remained in St. Petersburg for 20 years, and the symphony was her most important composition of that period. My childhood was easy, but who began lessons early as was usual among the gentry. It was hard to pull me away from the piano. My mother started to teach me when I was four. Then a kind and pleasant teacher was employed, Zinaida Fyodorovna Homutova, a pupil of Rubinstein's mother. In our first lesson, she showed me the C major scale, and in the second lesson, to her great astonishment, I played her all the major scales. Each scale was a revelation for me. I felt a special passion for the G major, and this has stayed with me my entire life. She was born in Lubim, in fact, but Lubim, it is a small town, it is maybe better to say a village. She was born there and then that's it. She was taken from this town to the estate her father bought and during the winters they were in Kostroma. She remembers much Kostroma because she studied there, her school was there, the teachers, the music, first music experience. She started playing uh, the piano when she was four uh, in their estate, of course. In the estate, it is somehow between Lubim and Kostroma and Yaroslav. It is in the forests. It is a very foresty territory. Rivers and uh, lakes and forests. Her first language was French, then it was Russian, later. And uh, in her memoirs, we can find this period of time that inspired her, because it is what she remembered. I can't tell you how exciting it's been over the years piece by piece to add to the catalogue of Kasperova's compositions. As I opened them and read them and sang them through in my head, I was always struck by the quality of the music. Her music is excellent and was very highly praised at the time. And I'm very pleased to say that since it's been edited and published and performed in the last couple of years, people have loved it. The orchestras and the singers, the musicians, the cellists, and the audiences have taken to it very greatly. And this is a wonderful feeling that my own instinct at that time has been confirmed. This music is very, very beautiful and will stand the test of time.